firstly on behalf uh, on behalf of the whole college so uh, president juncker uh, vice president dombrovskis i would like to uh, congratulate romania for achievements in the last year uh, because many of you i'm quite sure about it are among the architects of this success most of you uh, know the details much better than me, but let me just pick out of three of the many um, achievements. First, Romania has the highest rate of economic growth in the whole European Union and ranks first in the terms of cost competitiveness, for example. As a consequence, Romania, your country, is catching up forcefully and very quickly. Second, Romania has managed to keep fiscal risk largely under control. You are able to quit the adjustment program in September last year. And as a result, we conducted in March the, that Romania is no longer subject to macroeconomic imbalances. And third, <coughs> building in particular on it in that industrial clusters and thriving ICT sector, Romania has improved strongly export and trade in the single market. It was described in, in detail in the European Semester Country Report, which was presented and discussed even at, uh, in the very same room at the seminar a month ago. The report shows the progress made and the fact that Romania is catching up. But now, of course, Romania, your country, uh, must uh, ensure sustainable economic growth that benefits all Romanians. I call upon you, especially upon government, for continued structural microeconomic reform, increased investment and fund absorption, of course, because for this party of Europe it's extremely important. I ask you for determined measures to further improve also the business environment. This is the case throughout Europe. Indeed, further reforms are needed to address a number of remaining weaknesses getting in the way of entrepreneurship, investment and economic development. Let me be a little more uh, bit concrete. I mean, ref I mean reforms to modernize public administration. I think it's a very crucial and the base for everything later on. In improve the governance of state-owned enterprises, upgrade the transport and communication infrastructure, strengthen the digital skills of the population. This is the next extremely crucial and important point. Tackle obstacles to the investment and entrepreneurship. And of course, significantly increase the uptake of EU funds and investment opportunities. This means taking difficult and sometimes strategic choices. I know how difficult they are. I have this experience from my previous life in Poland, from Polish government. So I welcome very much the termination of the current government because I know that if you do it, it will be rewarded rather sooner than later this time. But as I said, this is a very joint project. That's why I'm here as a representative of the European Commission. We want to cooperate very closely with the government, the authorities, and the other st stakeholders to ensure that the reforms and projects are imp implemented effectively. These are your reforms, but we want to assist you. Our joint report should focus on three areas in which progress uh, is most urgent. So the strengthening investment, increasing the absorption, as I said before, of the um, uh, absorption rate of the EU funds, and further improving of business environment. Let me just shortly address of this, each of these in a turn. Uh, let me start with investment. We need strategic investment and an investment-friendly uh, environment across Europe. This is the main message of the investment plan for Europe. This plan foresees a smart mobilization of public and private sources of finance, at least 315 billion euros by the end of next year. At the heart of this European Fund for Strategic Investment, an additional tool alongside existing uh, uh, financing options. It is dedicated to projects in the areas where it's very difficult to obtain financing, as we were observing this in the previous years. You will discuss it in the details <coughs> later on during this conference. We need a good project to boost innovation, economic growth, and improve quality of life. But good projects, on the other hand, need good cooperation between public authorities and project managers. They need a friendly administrative and regulatory approach to be implemented efficiently. 
It is always a challenge for public authorities to put in place adequate capacity to manage projects and assist project promoters in their, their initiatives. Companies expect policymakers to remove barriers for investment. We have had a very promising start, as it was also, also said. I, I have the same data. Uh, for now, we have um, investment and projects for uh, 76, more even than 76 billion euros. I'm sure also there is a big potential in Romania and that the fund will lead to many successful initiatives there. I have to also add that we are um, focused not only on infrastructure. It's very important and I argue also Romanian authorities to place projects that we, that we are calling industrial projects, so projects for the companies, for example, for energy efficiency, all of the in, in, in industrial projects that are not presented quite largely now in the in a EFCI are very much welcomed. Uh, let me now turn to the business environment. Reform measures in the area really uh, are key for attracting investment and implementing investment projects. They not only pass a clear message to potential investors, they also ensure that investment projects are managed well. Addressing these difficulties means making progress in a number of areas, such as taxation and the financial environment. It is less easy even to raise money through local equity, equity markets in Romania than in many other countries in the EU. That makes it much more difficult for you and it's also harder to access venture capital here. And we need to see reforms of the public administration, of course, the next topic. That means ensuring that the public that the administration is efficient and effective. And it means that it should be at the service of companies and consumers. Romania has by far enough talents, skills and motivation to realize new ideas and to make the economy flourish. So Romania needs to complete its public administration and public <coughs> procurement reforms. Just before concluding, let me come back briefly to European semester, which could be and is becoming a really powerful tool also in the microeconomy. The reform needs are well understood. In the European semester, we, need to, we aim to identify, support and implement the reforms that are most important in view of the potential economic effects and potential implementation over the 12-18 months but also stakeholder involvement in their design and implementation is extremely important. So the plan setting up, this is new idea, the plan setting up of the National Competitiveness Board that will strengthen impact assessment and legal predictability. The Commission will analyze the national reform program of the Romanian government in detail. We will work together very closely to identify the most useful policy recommendation. The proposals would be adopted uh, by on 18th of May and Council will adopt them before summer. So just to conclude, Romania has already pursued significant reforms of the economy in line with the 2015 country specific recommendation. And Romania, Romania is taking a series of important further measures to remove long stand, standing obstacles to growth and jobs. It needs to step up these especially on the business environment, investment and access to finance. I really deeply believe that these reforms pay off and will allow Romania to sustain economic growth to the benefit of all. Again, I, I can tell you from my experience that this is worth it. This Commission will continue to support your country in carrying out these reforms. Economic coordination, in particular the European semester, has proven an effective instrument and we'll build on it much in details later on. Thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much host for hosting me uh, so warmly here in Romania. Thank you very much.